Hi babies. I guess it's come time that I've got to go ahead and answer for my mystical ways. And uh, there, there's just some perceptions and um, revelations that I have sat on since the beginning that come out and I, I perceive that they are provoking some scratching of heads. Um, and the gospel is a stumbling block. And um, we don't perceive these things with our carnal minds. And I think a lot of times we try to wrap our minds around stuff, especially stuff that the Apostle Paul talks about. And I've thrown a lot of stuff out recently. Um, and I'm getting flack. I feel it. And I see it. So I gotta, I've got to qualify some things here that, that I haven't gone off into any way of delusion whatsoever. Uh, if our response to the gospel and to revelation isn't somewhat uh, um, disorienting, then, then maybe we are not seeing it. Maybe we're holding things that aren't kingdom reality that we don't want to let go of. But I know that that the the uh, my introduction into into the gospel and into spiritual stuff uh, was very um, off putting, and it made me reevaluate evaluate and prioritize the value of the things that I put on this world. And I know that a lot of times it's easy for us to not want to let go of our iron grip on the things of this world when when things that are of higher value. Our treasure, which is laid up for us in heaven, that if we really believe that our treasure is laid up for us in heavenly places, if we have an inheritance that is comprised of heavenly realities, then uh, letting go of things of this world um, is is just the natural outcome. If we don't believe those things, uh, it'll be an offense because we want to hold on to stuff in this world. Um. But I know that originally I saw the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ specifically as um, something that we have possession of as a present reality. And it's not something that happened 2,000 years ago and our participation in it isn't something that we're waiting to experience for when we die. We died with him. We were uh, crucified and raised up together with him and are, are now seated together with Jesus in heavenly places. Together. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Um, so, one of the original uh, revelations, one of the original nuggets that Holy Ghost dropped on me at the beginning was um, that these experiences, even that the apostles had, even that the early church had, the people that rubbed shoulders with Jesus in the natural, that those, um, that there's an imminence to the presence of Jesus that isn't bound by time. And I realized by invitation of Holy Ghost that that which their eyes have seen, that which their hands touched, that which their ears heard is available to us through the Holy Ghost. And it's not, it's not, it, According to time, just a minute. Okay. But it's not according to any delineation of time. And the sooner that we let go of our linear expectations of how everything should fall in line, uh, the sooner we may be able to experience the presence of Jesus in the here and now. In the now. Not then, not what is to come. I mean, it's religion. It's a trick of the devil that kicks all of these experiences, all of our inheritance down the road. And I'm just not going to, personally speaking, I'm not going to tolerate that anymore. There is so much available to us now. And when God opened that up to me, the access that we have to, to these things now, it was Peter's preaching, actually, in Acts chapter 5. And he was talking, they, they said, what, what, are you, what are you talking this talk for? We told you to shut up. Um, uh, the Jews and religious leaders were getting on him because they had experienced Christ and they, they um, saw the resurrection. They knew that Jesus was dead and they wouldn't shut up about this new life 
And it says, uh, let's see. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men, because they had told them to shut up. Um, and God, the, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged him on a tree. So they, they, he was a witness of the death of the Lord Jesus. He knew that the, the Lord had actually died. Uh, him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Ghost whom God has given us, uh, to give unto them who obey him. So, we are witnesses of these things, and so also is the Holy Ghost. So, the perception of the Holy Ghost of all of these workings, all of these messages, all of these experiences that the apostles in the early church had, it's something, I mean, G Jesus even said, blessed are those that have not seen yet believed. That faith translates you and brings you into place through the Holy Spirit where you have access to these experiences on a level that these that were in the world or at, at that time didn't even have because they were relying on their physical senses. But our spiritual eyes are open. The Holy Spirit is alive within us. These are realities that we have access to. The death of the Lord Jesus, the burial of the Lord Jesus Christ, the uh, uh, resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and his ascension. These are heavenly realities that are ours now. Religion has kicked all this down the road and kept the everything beyond arm's length from everybody. And I'm just not going to tolerate kicking the can down the road anymore because this heritage is for us now. The Holy Spirit is bearing witness within us now of these things as present realities, not teaching us line and precept and chapter and verse about how we can expect eschatologically that these things will transpire. Get off that linear scale and start enjoying this life now.